Good morning. Hope you are well. It is Thursday, the 5th of December. Just having a quick review then of the charts this morning, and I'll run you through some of the main headlines that I'm looking at. Uh, some German data this morning. You've had Japan unleash a new round of fiscal stimulus to keep recession at bay. You've got an update on the trade wars, uh, and then the British pound continues to extend on gains. And then seeing some fluctuation in the price of oil going into, of course, the first day of the OPEC meeting in Vienna, which commences today, first day of a two day meeting. So that's what I'm going to talk about. So I'm not going to look at the charts in too much detail. I'll leave that to Sam. Uh, but overall, from a general sentiment this morning, uh, relatively neutral or flat, I should say, uh, stock index futures marginally positive. You can see in the center here in the NASDAQ and the S&P coming up to around the high of the range from yesterday's session. Uh, likewise in the DAX, pretty similar. Uh, probably a bit of a standout is the top chart here, which is the British pound, which I got the call wrong. I uh, have to put my hands up to that. I actually thought you know, the pound would come under some pressure. I thought that, I thought that US data was looking pretty solid as it had been for a period. And I thought that would exert a little bit of um, downside pressure. But the unwinding or flip flopping of Trump on the trade war uh, in combination with some of the weak data that we had ADP yesterday and with the conservatives, whether or not somewhat assisted by that obviously horrific attack that happened on London Bridge, but have started to maintain now uh, what is a double digit gain back a 10 percentage point lead in latest poll this morning and all these factors helping lift the pound to uh, a new high here this morning. So yeah, pound continuing to press ahead, but there's a few things I'll talk about there in a bit more detail in the options market, which goes to show that people are, uh, are not complacent. There's a lot of downside protection being taken in the options market for potential calamities that still could happen with the prospects of a hung parliament, probably more likely than anything else. Of a, of a labor led government, for instance. Uh, otherwise, uh, gold pretty flat, uh, the US 10 year down a touch, just about two ticks. So we're going to jump straight into some of the news headlines and let's have a look what's going on on that front. Starting off with some German data. Uh, let me just transition my screens. Uh, we had German orders this morning uh, to give you the data against market consensus. German industrial orders came in at minus 0.4%. Uh, as you can see here, forecasts were for a positive 0.4%. So pretty decent miss on expectations. Um, one thing then, the decline driven by investment goods, demand at home and overseas, um, defying the hope for a factory rebound. All of this, of course, sounds quite pessimistic and quite downbeat. And this is one of the things that I want to get uh, anyone who's new to markets. Uh, you've got to put economic data into context. When you read headlines like this on Bloomberg, obviously it sounds pretty frightening and it is a decent miss on expectations. It's a negative 0.4 against expectations of a positive 0.4. But the point being is, in context, um, let me show you a couple of different things. First of all, look at the data in terms of uh, factory orders in itself on its month over month general change that we see. Yes, this was a miss on expectations, but as you can see here from the, the last 12 readings, this data point does tend to fluctuate by a, quite a substantial degree. And as you can see here, minus or negative 0.4 is by nowhere near the worst prints that we've had over the last 12 months. And so, you know, rather than getting drawn into a lot of the, you know, just looking blindly at headlines, You've, this is why you've got to do your due diligence. And if you're preparing for economic data in the right way, then these sorts of things shouldn't come as a particular shock. And when I overlay this one as well, which looks at factory orders, but on a year over year perspective, then you can see, well, actually, this figure that we just had doesn't shake up the general pattern that we've had, which is that the German industry has taken a pretty sizable hit over the course of 2019. So with all this being said, even though it was a miss on expectations, the data in itself is absolutely no surprise at all. So hence the reason why there's been no little to no reaction in the euro. The Bund is in effect lower, not higher, 
as the data would suggest from a logical point of view. So again, my point here is always um, do your prep work, know your data sets and put everything into context. The other thing, of course, is that from a macro perspective, there's a lot of other big things going on. And on that front, this, of course, is the biggest. This is uh, the ongoing US-China trade war. There's not really too much new for me to report at this point. Obviously, Trump made a pretty prompt exit from NATO without giving his what was a tentatively scheduled uh, press conference at the end of his discussions. That was after a bit of bad mouthing coming by the way of other uh, senior leaders. So he got a bit of a bee in his bonnet and just left town. Uh, with that being said, I would suggest remaining particularly vigilant on Twitter uh, for any further updates out of the US president. Um, as though he starts to head back home, and as per his tweets over the last couple of hours, uh, he's been more tweeting about Ukraine and about the witch hunt, and obviously it's back to business on Capitol Hill, which is trying to avert uh, this kind of impeachment claim that's ongoing at the moment. But nonetheless, I'd keep an, an eye out. Um, what we had yesterday, of course, was a little bit of renewed optimism of otherwise what had been a fairly sizable sell-off at the beginning of the week on the deterioration of the situation. And this came by way of a Bloomberg source report talking about um, negotiators are getting closer on the amount of tariff relief and Trump's comments are not indicative of talks falling apart. So this kind of idea of him trying to manage the situation coming back to fruition once again. However, what I did think was quite interesting was the, uh, the Global Times editor, the kind of mouthpiece of the Chinese government on Twitter, Hu Zhijin, said, I predict there is a high probability that President Trump or a senior US official will openly say in a few hours that China-US trade talks have made big progress in order to pump up US stock markets. They've been doing this a lot, which is obviously the, the very much the common understanding in the marketplace of, of how Trump's been doing this. Now, the reason why I point this out, and I think it is quite interesting, is I would say the more the collective opinion becomes that Trump is basically trying to game the system, the lesser impact he's going to have in his ability to be able to influence markets, perhaps so directly as he has done in the past. Because now people will start to read between the lines, and when he says that they're making kind of progression and it all sounds quite optimistic, at what point then does the market start to go, do you know what? This is kind of the boy who cried wolf syndrome and we don't believe you anymore. And then the market just continues to sell off. Um, so he's going to have to be quite, quite careful with this because at some point in time, he's going to have to deliver on something. Now, the good thing about the Trump strategy and the way this negotiation is going is that You've got the potential temporary freeze and delaying of the December 15th tariffs. You've then got, uh, which could formulate or, or comprise of phase one. You've then got the unwinding of the September tariffs, the unwinding of the tariffs at the beginning of the year, the unwinding of the tariffs uh, last year. So that's a multi-phased um, way of which you could gradually unwind what had been a escalating trade war of the last 18, 24 months which I think will likely happen in the medium long term in order for him to really manage the market. So I think this is kind of very short termist, a little blip. But even if he gives a concession, I think he's got many other things that he can basically do this same process four times. And that buys him enough time then to see him through the election is kind of the way I'm, I see it at the moment. Moving elsewhere, uh, not going to talk about this for too long, but as I mentioned earlier, the latest poll, opinion poll for the UK general election, which you know, has kind of crept up really. It's not far off now. We are, uh, this time next week, the polling booths will be open. Uh, so Johnson has a 10 point lead over Labour before the election, according to the latest Comrades poll that's come out overnight. And you'll remember this was after. Uh, was it a YouGov one yesterday that was similar around a nine point lead? So after it was narrowing to about six, seven in some um, polls, it has now slightly rewidened and also stabilized with a rough double digit uh, lead for the Conservatives and hence one of the main supportive factors for the pound. Now, as you can see here, the pound now at its highest level since May 
Uh, it's managed in the spot price to get above 130, which was the October peak. And obviously, technically, then kind of the what had been restricting a bit of the price action over the last several weeks. And that opens us back up to an area where we haven't been for a while. I'll let Sam go over that chart in more detail. But one thing that, that has been interesting is that uh, pound dollar one week risk reversals. So those people kind of looking now that we're in a weak proximity of the election to protect themselves reflective of then potential downside surprises has been increasing. So bearish bets basically have been picking up. So even though we're moving higher, remember if, the, if people become of a view that a Tory majority is locked in, that they already start buying the pound now in pre-positioning for that to materialize. That means then, if Boris does not get a majority, all the bigger and more violent the sell-off will be, given the market's um, positioning on the pre-inbuilt pre-positioning that's happened. And so the higher we go, the more kind of people are taking a little bit of protection for the what if the hung parliament is probably the most realistic of those alternate scenarios to a Tory majority. Oil prices, um, yeah, decent lift in yesterday's session and also a little bit of volatility this morning as we get underway for the meeting in Vienna. Now, Saudi's offering a carrot and a stick to get OPEC to defend oil prices. Well, really, I'm going to jump to this one. This came out of the FT um, last night. And this was Saudi Arabia, according to the FT, is pushing OPEC and its allies to announce a deeper oil production cut as the group meets in Vienna in order to prop up prices ahead of a potential glut in supplies next year. Um, the move comes as analysts have warned that the crude market could be heavily oversupplied in the first half of next year and as the strength of the global economy has been undermined by the ongoing US, China and kind of global trade war emanating out of the US and their protectionist policy. So uh, this is coming to, as I was kind of intonating toward at the beginning of the week, I just found it very hard to see how somehow Saudi don't try in some shape or form to try and lift the price of crude in order to then, uh, given the pricing of their IPO of Aramco is today. And so when their shares do start trading in the coming days, they're going to want the best possible price just to have that kind of positive um, PR around the initial trading of their shares. Um, also, following up from the FT article, short well, last night, we've had a short while ago, OPEC Plus uh, discussed deeper oil output cuts of more than 400,000 pounds per day as the main scenario, according to a source as well. So one thing to be aware of, um, just because of these comments would be quite bullish for price, I would be super cautious about sitting in a position for a, a more than longer necessary period of time. Those of you who have never traded an OPEC um, meeting before, this is very typical. Now you start to get these really positive comments for price, then it can flip and all the different oil ministers will have very different opinions. Uh, the Saudi oil minister arriving on doorstep comments this morning didn't really give anything away other than talking about the weather. But you can almost guarantee you're going to get lots of whips or price action before something a little bit more definitive comes out. So your kind of time frames of execution of trade need to be a little bit more sharper, I would say, given the propensity for the market to flip on itself. Now, this is the agenda for today. All of these times are Vienna, so one hour ahead of London. So at two o'clock, you get the opening session today. So it's not until a bit later, but believe me, you're going to get lots of OPEC ministers talking to journalists, so tweets will be coming left, right and center, I'm sure. Um, the actual then closed session happens later on this afternoon. A press conference is expected to take place on conclusion of that meeting. So towards the end of the UK European session, if there is no leaks beforehand, um, then we're going to have a bit more something conclusive perhaps at the end of the day. And then you've also got the opening and closed session uh, of OPEC and non-OPEC producing countries. Uh, in tomorrow's Friday's meeting. So today is OPEC and then they throw in non-OPEC. So very important, of course, because it starts to include people like Russia. Uh, so that's the full agenda there. I have tweeted this full uh, tentative schedule as well if you need it to add to your calendars. Finally, for the calendar on the session from an economic data point of view, what have we got? Uh, let's just make this bit bigger so we can see. 
Uh, going through now, the German data is out. You've got the Eurozone uh, Q3 revised figures with retail sales coming out at 10. You've then got the uh, goods trade balance out of the US with the weekly jobless claims. You've also got Canadian trade balance data coming out at 1.30. Uh, the OPEC meeting, as mentioned, start kicking off at two, but just be vigilant for anything coming out beforehand as they go into that meeting. US factory orders will be watched now quite closely, just given the, the weakness of the data that we've had recently. Uh, and then from a speaker's point of view, uh, Bank of Canada's Lane is speaking around midday and got a Fed speaker as well into the afternoon and quite a bit of supply coming into the market as well. That might be just weighing a little bit on the bun this morning because despite the DAX as I'm delivering this, seeing a bit of a downtick, uh, buns are pretty unmoved, maybe a bit of short setting just to take make way for some of the, the large amount of supply cumulatively top end around 9 billion euros coming uh, from France and Spain. Okay, that is it. Going to hand you over to Sam. Uh, perhaps he can talk about the DAX a little bit more as we test uh, some of the range low from yesterday and the pivot in the futures at the moment. And then uh, I'll catch you later on. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah, hi, guys. Definitely worth keeping a, an eye on the DAX here. For sure, it's just coming down to test that low of the day now and really call it a zone. Yesterday afternoon's low uh, coming in at 13,097. And then a tiny bit below that, you've got the high that we had back on uh, Tuesday as well. So. Uh, for a confirmed real break of this this whole point, you're going to want it to go a bit lower down, and of course keeping an eye because we're only 27 minutes into that open on what were those previous lows, uh, we could easily snap back. It wouldn't be the most surprising thing in the world for that to happen. So, yeah, levels to keep an eye on that area up here from yesterday afternoon, uh, the high from Tuesday, and also yesterday morning's high. So a fair bit of support for it to get to. Really, you have to say before it's. Cur could uh, get quite interesting to the downside as well just putting on this potential trend line worth keeping a watch to see if we do get a third test of that of course at the moment just with the two uh, we don't you see here there we go so keeping a watch what happens there and you can see that also lines up bang on with yesterday afternoon's low so some key levels there to keep a watch on of course uh, this move started from the, the failure really to, to get above the uh, the high that we had from yesterday you can see that double top from this morning but also yesterday's high uh, and the failure to get there so worth keeping a watch on obviously that goes lower uh, so may US equities uh, as well you could imagine in the morning the pound continue to push higher here it's uh, been on a on a tear recently up trading now uh, 131.50 the highest it's been in uh, well against the dollar anyway if we go back here it's bang a horizontal line yeah beginning of May uh, of this year so decent move I was looking at this yesterday uh, the high that we've got from around 2014 uh, I'll put it on my Twitter but uh, this trend line here you can see we'll be looking to come in not too far away from we're trading Just narrow that down around 132 that trend line or potential trend line I should say also matches up if it was today with the high that we had on the 3rd of May and if you remember that was really the top before we started pricing in uh, a no deal possibility. So really key point, I would say, to keep a watch on uh, and that marking up just about 50 ticks above where we're trading. If we were to find resistance there and drop down, obviously keep a, a watch on that previous range that we've been in. You can see uh, any of those previous highs would be worth keeping a, a watch on. And then, of course, uh, if we put this on this uh, longer term, you can see really that, that trend that broke through. Uh, as well around 130 uh, are really key levels above that trend line the, the longer term one uh, I don't see much stopping it towards 133.20 so another big push could come of course uh, it just takes one big headline and, and we come all the way back down euro pound uh, before we come onto the euro you can see euro pound here the lowest it's been since it's bang a little line on there yeah May 2017 um, it had a, a couple of attempts previously trying to break this area we had in, in January, uh, February, March and April uh, 2019. Couldn't do it. Pushed all the way up to that multi-year high that we had on August to, to 2017 
one day above it and then came all the way back down is this a, an amazing place to buy or is this actually the start now of uh, a complete change of, of this overall direction we continue to push lower time will uh, will tell and of course the election will have something to do with that having a look over at the euro yesterday uh, did reach some interesting levels it could still get dragged higher by the euro uh, by the pound of course if it is of positive Brexit news, but what a key level it is. You can see here, you've got the high, the low, a couple of lows, a few highs, and more highs again before having a little false break yesterday. So keeping a watch on this, 1.1109, pretty important point has to be said. Uh, if that is to hold, not much really could stop it, you would say, until, well, I guess around 1.1044, but 1.10 would be the target down to uh, those lower points. Above it, then, yeah, sure, we can, we can spread our our wings and, and get a, a push and maybe longer term uh, looking for that 112 so quite well set the euro depending on, on your bias and, and wait to perhaps see what's happened if you didn't get in that short yesterday another test of that level which comes in just before the uh, the R1 so be aware of that and of course yesterday's high as well and then you can see on the shorter time frame yesterday's low is Tuesday's low as well really key point if that is to go uh, to the downside, you you'd be pretty comfortable in in holding this short. I would say almost down to the highs that we had back on the 25th. That comes in around today's S2, uh, whereas uh, yeah, that high uh, of yesterday above the R1. Also worth keeping in high an eye, I should say, on the the double top we had from the second and the third, just a bit above where we're trading. But dollar a bit weaker, uh, the pound pushing things as well. So keep a watch on. Uh, the euro of course gold yesterday we were talking on the uh, the brief and just of how significant 1490 was and you can see here just how well respected that support was before we broke through first real test and it comes all the way down however of course nothing to do really with that with the technical side of things we had the uh, positive trade comments and uh, but then we had a bit, a bit of weaker US data which just gave people another chance to get into that trade and we came back lower couldn't break through the pivot uh, not too surprisingly though it was the previous high of uh, of Tuesday as well so there just shows the importance of that patience and this was around yeah 320 uh, I was saying well if that was to go then we could see a further move lower so that's still something I'd have marked up 14 76.7 to the upside now uh, you're obviously keeping a, a watch on that 1490 longer term it is just absolutely massive uh, more intraday a couple of decent points just above where we're trading um, as well the higher the day coming in around as well as yesterday's resistance it's called it 1487 just under 85 1484.7 uh, as well no real trend lines in the mix uh, of where we're trading now relatively choppy it's up a uh, dollar at the moment so not too much going on for gold however if we just scoot it back a bit can we get anything from those lows let's have a quick look you can see we almost got a third test of that so from the low of the second to the third let's have a look to see what happens uh, on the, the test of this low do we get an area of support if we do obviously it could be a good opportunity on that short and break as well of 1476.7 oil been on a bit of a tear as well is this the pound or is it oil big push over the last 24 hours and uh, let's put this on that 240 you can see uh, if we were looking at this trend channel that we had on yesterday again I'll just roughly draw this on you can still see we've got a fair bit of uh, fair, fair way to go before we would get the top end of that but the highs of yesterday and also the highs that we had on the 27th and 22nd are very very important also pretty much the higher the 20th so 58.73 is going to be big uh, keep a watch on that uh, as if that is to go and close above well 60 dollars could well be the target that people look at however of course it's not guaranteed that that is going to be uh, well the direction for the day so keep a watch on some support levels below 57.50 i quite like the look of you had all these lows around here from 27 broke through it like it was nothing yesterday uh, however, uh, keeping a watch on that uh, as well. And then also around the S1 looks like a, a pretty good point, I'd have to say. Quick look over at equities in the US to, to think, finish things up. R1, important. You've got that uh, retracement point that we had uh, late trade on the second. Also, you'd say yesterday's high is worth keeping an eye on as it's almost today's high as well. And actually, when you start drawing up these 
uh, previous highs and lows. You can just see how technical these markets are actually at the moment. R1 yesterday, nice uh, area to to have got short it seems, but also you can see the low of today is the high of yesterday morning, 3100, well respected as well, 3095. I'll be keeping a watch on that. So, you know, while uh, uh, this market, you know, has, uh, did recover a fair bit yesterday, still acting pretty technical for either the longs or the shorts. Uh, I think if we were to get above uh, the the high of yesterday, just be aware that a couple of points above that you do have the high. Uh, of Tuesday as well so it might make that a bit trickier and maybe focus on the R1 is slightly better there uh, as well if we were to get uh, a bigger move down in European equities then um, then sure favoring the break of that level is, is isn't a bad idea but you can already see from the DAX there hits the pivot hits yesterday's low almost hitting that trend line and we bounced a fair bit already so just shows how you know the, the patience and waiting uh, is key we actually can see a uh, pretty much hit that trend line didn't it so let's let's you know still have that on and a break of that i'll be targeting to the downside i'm on about here the, the previous high that we had uh, around quarter past five uk time any questions as usual please uh, do let us know euro pushing higher the dollar weak probably dragged higher as well by the pound you've got some key levels above where we're trading for the euro It'd be interesting to see what alex says when he comes on uh, oil could be a, a busy day got some very important resistance let's just call it yesterday's high and a bit above that could really if that's a break lead a, a push towards $60 equities mm, who knows but positive sentiment, sentiment ruling at the moment gold 1490 very key to the upside 1476.7 to the downside cont uh, containing that range should be a good day hope you all uh, uh, have a good trading session let me know if you have any questions